everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show here. Welcome to Click 3D. This is the program where we talk about photogrammetry and how you can make really impressive 3D models with your camera and a little bit of software. Today, I'm gonna to try something different. It's gonna be our very first guest interview. And I have somebody uh, pretty special in my books. Uh, his name is Stephen Perry, somebody who I met 20 years ago in Australia, go figure. And Stephen is a professional photographer. And as many of you know, uh, since photogrammetry is based on taking or being able to take really good photographs, right? All good photographic principles apply. So today we're going to be speaking with Stephen. He's going to help us out on lighting and different lighting techniques. And even though it's from the artistic side, you know, bringing it over into the photogrammetry side, uh, you know, I think all those same principles apply. So let me just bring him in here. There he is, Stephen. How are you, sir? Eugene, has uh, nice to see you. You haven't changed at all in <laughs> Likewise, 20 years. I was, maybe, I was, maybe one gray hair has happened there. That's I it. got a, a little bit on the side here. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I just shaved mine off now so you can't see any. You just see a head. Well, you're, you're you're doing pretty right. well yourself from what I can tell. So that's great. Yeah, it was a long time ago, wasn't it? Uh, 20 years ago, we were in, uh, in Cairns, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah on a boat doing wow. a diving course. Which that's was right. Very interesting. And, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you about. Um, let's let's get right into it. I'm gonna ask you about your background. I mean, you're you're a professional photographer, and uh, I'm gonna as you're speaking, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring your website up to show people uh, exactly uh, the kind of work that you do. But um, from the very beginning, I remember some of the work that I had seen that you'd done from a you know from when we first met was just super impressive. And I'm like, there's no way I could take photos like that. So you know, my background's engineering. It's not really a creative. And you know you're clearly an artist, right? With what you do. So, um, thank you. How did you get into this? How did you get into photography? Um, I think I really didn't know what to do as a kid. I really didn't know anything. And I and a, a friend of mine was in in short. I'll tell you. Um, I was um, a surveyor. I worked for a surveying company, and it was it was just work, office office working um and it just wasn't for me I, I just got frustrated sitting behind a desk um even though you know surveying it's the sort of thing you're supposed to go out and do stuff with buildings and i enjoyed buildings but didn't really enjoy the actual work behind the desk mm -hmm. so um yeah late in life i decided that um a friend of mine was a photographer and i said ah, how do you how do you get into that so um he uh, i just enjoyed Doing stuff with him, I helped him out a few times and uh, just really enjoyed it. And then the next thing, I just thought, right, that's it. I gave up, went to um, this place called the Association of Photographers in the UK, and it's for they had an assistance uh, register, so you could just um, photographers advertise for assistance in this book. And I went there and opened the book, saw that there was a, a job for a, an assistant photographer on you know pretty a bad wage um and um and i thought oh that's that's the one and i just took it out of the book i uh, stole it so that no one else could <laughs> 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 so this is a long time ago so i don't mind saying this now but um so yeah i nicked it basically and uh, rang him up and uh, he gave me a job so um the first and he was a still life photographer actually so the first my first assisting experience was working for a still life photographer and he taught me how to shoot with, uh, how to load a 10.8 camera, 5.4 camera and all the other cameras that you could you know, imagine and that kind of thing. And then he, uh, he kind of had one, one client that gave him all his different work um, and uh, that client went, he went, and then I had to look for jobs. So I was working and then, <laughs> Uh, my last assisting job that I worked for a guy called Terence Donovan, who was a uh, portrait, 60s, came up in the 60s, basically. He was a mm -hmm. friends with friends with David Bailey. So um, there was he, him, David Bailey, uh, Brian Duffy. There were, there were three photographers who came from the East End of London. And um, it was a very interesting experience. So he gave me a job, mostly portraits, fashion, all kinds of things like that, really. Um, okay. So I worked for him for two and a half years before I would then decided to go out on my own. So it was a, it was, it's been a journey. That assisting journey was quite intense, really. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and you, you started with, you started with film, film cameras, or no? 
Oh, well, did... yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was no d digital world didn't exist. Phones didn't exist. You know, it was like, uh, I don't think, I think when I started, I didn't, you could even, there wasn't faxes. <laughs> it was that long ago. <laughs> um, you know, I remember the first fax and it was just like the most exciting thing ever. You know, wow, that's come through a machine. Yeah. So then since then, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a whole new world. And there's wow, me so, saying that and my phone's just packed up so i've had to say yeah i should back. i should let everybody know that uh steven is broadcasting from a caravan because he's yeah. renovating what's going to be his new home and so uh we, yes, we went this through isn't my, this isn't my standard decor of home you know? <laughs> I've, I've, I've i've closed this door here because that's the bed behind there and i thought it's so piled up with with stuff that uh, <laughs> just shut the door and get everything out of the way Living yeah, well, in a caravan, it's, it's a hard, it's interesting. Well, we'll see if it'll hold together. I think it'll hold together. So far, so good. Yeah, thanks. Thanks All for right. saying that. <laughs> so when, do you remember when you you had your first digital camera? I, yeah, I do, yeah. Um, it, God, you know, it's, a, it's, oh, yeah, I do, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think what it was, actually. And it was a, I don't remember the, the, the model number, but it was a Kodak digital 35 mil camera and it was just terrible it was just awful uh, you know it was like the, the only one that that i could get at the time that i could just about afford um there were others that were that were medium format um and they were just you know beyond words expensive at the time so i didn't yeah. uh, and and the kind of the worst thing was is that i was traveling i was doing a job um that was traveling from i sent you a picture actually this is the first car job i did right and it's a red um um uh, corvette i think it was it was a red corvette in, that i shot in america and it was shot in a studio and um i don't know whether that that's the one yeah that's it um and i did that job that was done in uh denver no it wasn't it was uh anyway somewhere <laughs> yeah somewhere in the u.s <laughs> somewhere in the u.s um and um on the way back and that was shot on film that was on a mamiya film camera rz uh, six seven and um and on the way back my cameras went missing um, oh no yeah so i i had to replace all of them and it was just before the digital era era really kicked off so i then so i had a whole new kit um i think it was no actually no sorry it was a contacts yeah i had a contacts film camera it was brilliant actually 645 contacts yeah. and um and then i i i <clears throat> got a whole new kit uh but it was all film because i obviously on the insurance i had to get that and then um then the digital era kicked off, you know, and it, I, th you know, I think, oh dear, you know, if, if if they'd have just stolen all that gear about six months later, I would get a whole new set of digital <laughs> kit, uh, which right. is a shame. Uh, That's but, right. Um, that was my first car car experience, which um, I had a I had a. That's a story in itself, really. I had a job, um, and my and and of all the still life jobs that you could get, the car was probably the big. Sorry, let's just move my table. Um, that was the most scary the most scary i mean it's quite interesting to be scared i hadn't been scared really for a job but, but i went to america and shot in this massive studio like you would get in america mm -hmm. you, know, you, don't, you don't really get them like here and you couldn't see the end of it you know it was one of these cove studios thinking, where's the end but there was a car far away there there's a little corvette and um and these two lighting guys just well, they were kind of, one was up a ladder and it was kind of so they call them sparks over here these lighting guys and mm -hmm. um they were the guys that were looking after the studio set the lighting up for me and um and they just said to me what do you want and i just thought i have no idea i have absolutely no idea what i want <laughs> that's <laughs> the first time i shot a car so i just thought uh i'll let you know in a minute so i went off and and <laughs> and just sat I, the, the, when i think i think okay well i go and sit on the not obviously don't i sit on the 
sit on the loo, right? <laughs> Close the door. It's a private area, right? It's a private place. And I just shut the door and I sit there and I think. And I'm sitting on and I think, what the hell am I going to do? What am I going to do? Right. Okay. I'm shooting for the, for a magazine. It was called Car Magazine in, in the UK. It was a big, big magazine. And um, and I just thought, I'll just do what I know. And it is, in the end, I just thought, I'd, I'll do, I'll shoot it like it's a person. Yeah, you know, it's the worst thing you can think about shooting a car like a person but i just thought right that's that's what i know i'm going to shoot it like it's a person so so when i came back i just said okay i want direct lighting on the this there i want this there and this shadow appeared on the back and i thought oh that's really cool <laughs> i really liked it <laughs> and um, <clears throat> and when they and 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 it was just pointing the lights at this car which is you know obviously when you're shooting a car you tend to bounce lights around so that you get it all soft and nice and and on all the rest of it but this was just me making it up but just directing the light in the car and i thought actually it looked really cool right and, yeah, it does. Uh, and because it was a sports car and because it was quite a muscly car it kind of worked and i was very lucky like that and it was red um and when the guy said to me this, yeah, this lighting guy and he said to me wow we wouldn't be we wouldn't be allowed to do stuff like that here <laughs> and i just thought that's it i've got it that's it. I've done, yeah. I've done something that is different, you know, and I think that's cool. So anyway, they they use the pictures and they they. Oh, well, that's great. It. And um, uh, after that, I saw more pictures like that around. So I was kind of thinking, oh, maybe I well, started something. Lighting is exactly why you're here. That's that's what we. That's what I want, what I want to talk to you about. And you know, so obviously on the artistic side, um, versus kind of the photogrammetry side, what I'm doing, I'm looking for very diffuse lighting like very like no you know removing any shadows trying to really bring out texture but on the mm -hmm. creative side so when i was flipping through the the website and let me bring that back up um for example the celebrities can mm -hmm. we let can you talk to me or tell me about lighting for people for example and and what what kind of techniques or even equipment that you need in order to make some of these things happen and obviously in some cases i can see you you know you have things which are more in control or you have more control than maybe in some other places but yeah what, yeah. what can you tell us about lighting for people well i tend to use flash everywhere i tend to i mean it, it's it, portable flash a lot of the stuff obviously you see, see there is shot on location so I tend to shoot on location a lot, um, and with flash, you've got complete control. Um, and the one of the nicest bits of technology that's come out in in, in recent years has been the high speed sync, um, and then that's given even more freedom to shoot sort of every kind of way, every which way. You know, it's 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 allowing you to to shoot against the sun and and you know one of these things that you you find is, is there's a bit of a problem is that you can't get the shutter speed that you want because the sun's in your face but you don't want someone looking into the sun because it mm -hmm. creates these harsh shadows so you have the sun behind them but when the sun's behind them and you can't get the shutter speed you, you know it's bright um then then you're you're struggling you know you have to overexpose and you don't get the sky and all these things but high speed things help that so with flash um you can combine you can mix daylight uh with fill in flash you can use flash as a you know blast it so that you can make it darker as a background there's there's so many there's so many things that you can do you you've got complete creative freedom with it which is and obviously portable flash all these days portable flash has become a lot more um accessible cheaper um more powerful um, and all these things so you know when i was before i'd be either using a generator and plugging in a flash uh, <laughs> or trying a really long extension lead from a house you know and uh, to try and get the power into it to try and block the sun out so that's that's a major bit advance over the last few years which has helped a lot and okay. given, given photographers a lot of help but generally speaking with with people um the the main difference i think is is between men shooting men and shooting women you know you kind of think well men like to look a bit tough you know that's a general kind of rule of thumb they like to you know most most men i would say you know it depends 
depend. You know, it's not always the case, but you know, most men like to look a little mm-hmm. bit strong, tough, and you've got kind of a bit of lighting that can help. Um, which <laughs> not this guy know. here, yeah. <laughs> right. but this Walsh, guy certainly, yeah, the guy well, beside Brad, him for sure. Bradley Walsh, he's a comedian, and um, we were shooting for something else on that, and that was something that was like an advertisement for for, for whatever it was, and then he's we both talked about a, a cover of Vogue that was uh demi more pregnant demi Moore. And, he, yeah. and we were just talking about it and he, he said to me do you want me to do that and i went yeah why not <laughs> yeah what you know why wouldn't i want you to do that that would just be so funny and he just did that pose like like a demi more vogue when she was pregnant cover and um it was just he's a genius i mean this guy he's absolutely brilliant he does game shows and all sorts of he's very funny he's an actor um and um and the guy next to him on the left he's that's that's a guy called he plays a part called mrs brown where he dresses up in drag and he's this irish um kind oh, of middle-aged woman yeah that's oh, okay that's yeah, mrs. yeah brown so mrs mrs brown's um it's very popular here. yeah, yeah. In, in ireland he's a bit of a hero and um and then left again is a guy called Suggs from Madness, and he he's you know that kind of lighting is is just just makes guys look kind of a bit tough. Um, whereas women um, tend to want to look a little bit softer. You know they don't want these harsh shadows because mm-hmm. it brings out all the texture in their skin, and they want to be softened. You know I don't think I've taken it, and since then obviously with the power of Photoshop and retouching, I don't think I've ever shot a woman who hasn't wanted a little bit of retouching as sure, well so sure, sure. you know there's always there's always that to add on to it you, um, uh, hmm. let me ask you about this photo right here so I, i'm not sure what this is this is like some kind of a candle thing or i'm not what, what is it's, what is it's, it? it's like a it's like a vintage sugar um dispenser ah, okay. really so it's just, just a shaker so I suppose you could just use it for anything, but um, but that was I was I was just shooting for um, a, a, a food magazine, and we do portraits, and we should go to someone's kitchen who's a, who's a, either a celebrity uh, uh, chef <clears throat> and shoot in their house, and it's some of the things they have that they've kept or whatever, and I just thought that was a really beautiful little object, really, mm-hmm. um, and um, obviously the background that's just simply shot with daylight there was no no lighting um and it's just it's 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 a really day some some forms of daylight you know when it's when it's diffused um can be just the perfect light you don't need any other light right so i mean and and that's what that's when you when you start photography you think well what is photography all about and it's it's lighting that's it lighting is what photography is all about mm-hmm. and 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 you i mean i grew up with these movies um you know you get hitchcock and you get all these all these beautiful black and white movies that um that i watched as a kid and i just loved the way the movies were lit and they they had a certain quality about them because they had to be there wasn't any of this kind of video um the kind of um, 70s 70s 80s kind of video styling lighting i mean things have got a lot better now with Mm -hmm. when you're looking at tv shows obviously you know it's it's kind of gone back to some really really beautiful lighting in in films and things like that now but um but originally yeah you when you look at the way things were lit it was just beautiful Uh, so so in this case i mean you had daylighting so obviously that that was uh, to your benefit, but for example, if you're in a if you're in a studio or if you have control, um, do you use diffusers? Do you bounce lighting off of uh, things to get this sort yeah. of effect? Absolutely, yeah. There's, a, I mean, the difference. It was quite interesting, really. When you when you see that shot of the car, if you imagine, you know, the, a car is quite interesting because it's all shiny. You know, the, one of the worst things you can photograph is a shiny thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, um, you know, when I'd realized and got a bit better at stu- uh, car, car lighting, there's a picture of a Porsche, I think, somewhere, which is a bit more diffuse. I was bouncing the light off all these places, off the ceiling, off the walls, and it's a gold um, um, Porsche that I've got. I don't know whether it's, it's there somewhere. but um, And that's the kind of thing. It's, it's every, um, um, every kind of 
Uh, I might have emailed it actually, but it it was. Um, oh, that's a different. That's a that's part of my um, oh, website, else. which is no. <laughs> it's it's a, it's like personal, not personal. It's it's like portraits that are not a, a kind of shot by me, really. Okay. So uh, and and um, where I've got more control, so they're not sort of having a client standing over me. The client is the person I'm shooting, rather than having a advertising commercial client. So I can kind of do as long as they're up for it. You know, I can sort of do more what I want with the lighting sort of thing. So that's a more oh, that's it. That's it. That's the one. So it's, that's more of a diffused kind of light mm -hmm. where lights bounced and um, you've got um you got sort of highlights it's just softer so yeah. and that's the thing that every kind of still life well when you're shooting when you're shooting women you know it's kind of like you want to diffuse the light a little bit more most of the time i'd say um you know as a rule of thumb it's <laughs> um and um and there you can bounce you bounce flash off a white background you can diffuse light by putting it through a soft box, bouncing it off an umbrella. Um, just bounced light is just a softer kind of light. Yeah, anyway. okay. So about how, like, just like in terms of quantity and then placement, like what, what do you often start with? Let's say, I'm sure it, it varies, but um, do you have, a, you know, a few different sources of light and then you kind of try to, you know, focus in on the front and maybe have a little bit at the back or, or what do you try to do? typically um it, it depends i mean i think if you're if you're making a soft light you need a for the sort of thing that you're looking for um and if you were saying to me i want this shot like i want it i want it soft i want to see i want to see the whole product front to back because that's another thing is, is mm -hmm. when you've got soft light flash is a really useful thing because you need the power in the light to actually get the depth of field to be able to get the thing in focus from the front to the back so how you how close you are to it also affects the, um, the focal the focal length of the lens and all these things and the actual aperture that you're using and if you use a small aperture then you're going to get more of it in focus right. so um you know you can have a soft light where you've literally got the a depth of field of like that's that you know, if you use a macro lens and you get really close to something, you've got a depth mm -hmm. of field of like a two millimeters, you know, and um, and that's that's affects the kind of light you use as well. Um, if you want um, to have a lot of a lot a lot of a soft light bounced when you bounce a light, it obviously loses the power, so you need more power to bounce the light. And if you're firing a light straight at a subject so you need even more power to bounce the light to make that depth of field um so then it gets a little bit more um i'd say expensive <laughs> because you know the more powerful the light really right. you know, in some ways the more expensive it is it's just you know it's just the amount of watts that you can bash into something um and so uh there's there's that but it depends on the size of the object that you're photographing obviously with with still life the advantage that you do have is that you can put the camera on a tripod you can have a, a two minute exposure if you want mm -hmm. at f22 um so you can actually kind of compensate a little bit for that small aperture um as long as you don't breathe when you're pressing the button <laughs> and if you're not standing on floor you know if the tripod's standing on floorboards and you actually stand on it that's it you know you've wobbled it it's very and you if you've if you've got a, a mirrored camera then uh, you know you pop the mirror up before you take the shot so the mirror doesn't jog the the camera as well so there's all these little th little techniques with a with a um, cable release and a tripod that you that you just use right right really um, and that kind of thing so i don't i don't use a flash often and then and it's and part of it is just because uh like when i'm uh using you know or, or photographing a specific object i typically have time so i can you know use a tripod extended exposure and i have a remote now so you know i just use the remote all the time yeah um but when using a flash actually I, you know i it it clicked as soon as you said it it makes a lot of sense you know you can increase your 
your f-stop number and then just but you need a lot more light and that's where the flash can really help mm -hmm. um but often what i and again I, I need to experiment with it a little bit more but um i often get like weird shadows or things like that that i, I got to try and maybe pull away uh somehow but in terms of the um the direction of the flash right so mm. you know move, putting it straight at somebody putting it up high or mm. sometimes diffusing it what kind of what kind of tricks do you have in your your bag so to speak um that uh, you'd like to use um well if you if you don't want shadows it's sometimes it's, there's different things that you could do and if you if you obviously if you if you had the space and you can bring the uh you can bring the um Sorry, I just got to interrupt. The uh, if you bring the 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 object that you're photographing far enough away from the background, mm -hmm. then um, then you can put a flash into the background, and then you don't have any shadows. So as long as you've got the the flash um, brighter than the um, the actual front light that you're using, then you take away shadows. Because if you've got two lights, if you want an even light, and you and you have two lights firing at the object from let's say it's in the middle and you've got two lights firing at it from this side. If you don't have uh, any, um, don't, you don't have a background light, then you just get this cross shadow at the back coming across like that. So you kind of get this two, mm -hmm. two flash, two flash shadows thing. Um, a bit like you see on a, on a football pitch or something like that. And, you know, you get the floodlights and then um, obviously you've got, you've got, probably four main floodlights in the corners but every shadow you, you see a player on the ground they got like these four shadows going across and it's you know you get these different things so you can either blast the light at the back um bring the object further forward so you don't have a shadow sort of falling onto anything or and depending on the angle of where the camera is and where it's looking up or you have a light right in the middle um above the camera so if it's if it's firing down on the object, you mm -hmm. know, quite a lot of still still life. You have a light above it, so you know if you have a if you're shooting a car, for example, then you fire lights into this massive reflector over the top of the car, uh, and if you you know you could and you, you just reduce that down to something like you're shooting a a cup or an iPhone or something like that. You you know small thing. You have a little reflector like this or or something over it. So everything is just size um, related to what you're shooting, mm -hmm. and um, and that's the thing. You 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 have it above the subject so that the main light is there, and then you fill in. If you could even actually have it sort of slightly at the back, and then bounce that flash um, or light or whatever it is. You could, LEDs, you know, it's a great cheap option these days. LEDs, and then um, and you could and it, and yeah, and, and it bounces off into the front of it as well. So LEDs are actually really, uh, these days are you know well within the um, price of yeah. any kind of amateur photographer. And there's there's all kinds of LEDs that you can get. Um, so that and the nice thing about them is obviously they don't get hot. <laughs> right. So um, you know you don't you don't end up sort of burning. The, and you can put all kind of different colors over them. Um, and uh, so so yeah diffusing from that from the top is actually quite a nice you had, you had mentioned also about you know when you're photographing the car you know about just the reflections and glare and of course like in this particular photo you you've obviously got some you know i don't know what you call it specularity shine reflections and things like that have you ever had to use um like a polarizing filter or have you ever had to use um, are like any sprays or coatings on an object to help sort of minimize some of the artifacts that you get or that you don't want? Um, I mean, I, not, I say not really. No, I mean, I, 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 to be honest, I probably have, but I can't remember. And um, it was a long time ago because all things these days, you know, you can get rid of artifacts in Photoshop now. So, mm -hmm, right. so if I have done it, it was, it was a long time ago. I think the worst like one of the worst things to photograph, I remember was, and I may have done it then, was a kettle. And, you know, a, a kettle, if you imagine a silver, shiny kettle, which is like a mirror, um, at least at least the mirror's flat, you know, uh, it, it, most of the time. Um, so um, you could angle it mm -hmm. away and you can angle it to a certain point 
where you can um, actually get the right reflection in it. But when you're photographing a kettle, this is you, you know every every surface. I mean, <laughs> is just a, a you know it's it's a very it's quite a specialist thing. And I did have to photograph a um, <clears throat> one of these ice bucket. I think it was it was a champagne ice bucket, mm -hmm. and it might be in there. I don't know if it was on my website or not, but. Um, and it was silver and shiny and it's kind of one of those things where you have to virtually <clears throat> get that's the one yeah um and you 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 to create the right kind of um uh, light on it um <clears throat> you have to diffuse obviously the light but you know without seeing yourself in it you know yeah. you, have, you put a white sheet and then just put a little hole in the hole in it so you're pointing the camera lens through this white sheet that's in front of you um and that that you get away with quite a lot uh you might see a little black dot but a little black dot to retouch is better than a wide angle shot of you <laughs> and the studio and the and everything else right that right that's a great done. that's a great idea that's uh i didn't think about that because i'm thinking about the kettle and i'm, and I'm saying where do you run? There's nowhere to run for cover. There is because... nowhere to run, which is why you know, which is why that now they bought out these these. Um, well, they've been out for a while, but um, you know, you could get literally get a box, which is just a diffused box, mm -hmm. uh, diffused on all sides except for a little hole in the middle of the camera. So it's a white diffused thing, and you light it however you light it from the outside of this box i mean some of them have lighting built in now so um you can actually just stick a kettle in this thing um and press a button and you probably got it covered you know yeah. uh but then it was like shooting a kettle oh my god you know it's <laughs> like you have to surround this whole thing in a big sheet <laughs> and uh, and then stick your head stick the, the lens through a, a hole in it so lots of polystyrene boards and bits of white card and sheet and various things and then not just that but you still want to see you don't want it to look like um you don't if if you if if all is you reflect it is white it looks like a white kettle not a silver one mm. so then you have to get certain areas that are, that make it look shiny and the way to make it look shiny is to have little dark black elements in it so that it looks shiny you know it's funny you want black black reflections in it to make something look shiny but that's that's kind of half the half the battle of doing something like that so so um yeah it's a it's a that's tricky when it comes to when it comes to the camera settings um how much are you play i mean are you working with is it really just aperture and shutter speed between the two are you messing with iso are you messing with other things in the camera um, what what are the what are the the basics you work with? I think the main thing is what lens you use. Um, you don't really mess with ISO because if you want the highest quality, you just have the lowest ISO you can mm -hmm. on the camera. Um, depending on these days, really how much detail you want is what camera you use. I mean, phones are are still alright. But they're not. They're never going to give you the quality of a, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So yeah, sure. of, of the kind of detail that you want to get um, and texture. Um, but ISO, no. I think you just keep it low for the detail um, because simple as that. You put it on a tripod and you can just press the button and wait for whatever a minute, twenty mm -hmm. seconds, however long. Um, but and then depending on the depth of field you just keep the the um the the aperture uh small um you know keep it down to 16 um and then um you've got the um and then the speed obviously it's just you're fairly you're fairly fixed on the speed um as far as whatever that's the thing that gives you the amount of light that you want so mm -hmm. i think that's that's the thing that's kind of the changes the most throughout so depending on what light you use um whether you're using flash whether you're using high speed sync whether you're using leds uh daylight and how much how much light you want you know, if you've got a window you don't want you, you, although you want a lot of light you don't want sun coming through because that's too harsh you want right. to diffuse light so if you have a window light which is actually beautiful um you also want 
to be able to shoot through a w- with a window like not with the light behind window behind you even though that would be the be- probably the best um because your shadow would just be in the way of the light um so a diffused light and if you've got sunlight coming through a window then just a you know if you're like a bit of tracing paper um over the whole window or something diffused like a cloth that you could that, that just opaque that just lets mm-hmm. the light through um that's that's that will just soften the sun um that kind of thing and then you just bounce another um get a reflector or something and if you haven't got a reflector um a big white bed sheet you know hang it up yeah. Yeah. Um, and that kind of thing. So, so you can use all sorts, really. You don't need the specialist equipment if you're at home. Um, you can use all sorts, really, that you can come to hand. There's always something you can use that's white or silvery. Um, yeah, for sure. Hey, what about yeah. uh, like edge edge detail? Like, if you have, if if you want to bring out, uh, let's say, I have an object or something, you know, whatever it might be, and then you know, I want to when I photograph it from the front, I want to really capture the edges and things like that. What kind of tricks can you use? Uh, it's a bit, I think uh, again, it's it's allowing the the backlight um, to be exposed correctly when it's when you're backlighting something. When you it's it's just to get the exposure right the, to um, in ratio in in the ratio of the backlight to the front light has to be kind of right. You just want a bit more light coming on the back to the light coming on the front. So you know maybe a stop. It may be two stops, depending on what it is. If it's a black object, it may be that that light has to be two stops more than the front light. If it's a white object, but you still want that kind of a highlight over it, then it, you, you can reduce down the backlight. So it's just it just kind of pings off. It's still, you know, something shiny. You just don't want that light to ping off the back. So it's just kind of um, gives you that just a little spark. Right. It's a bit like, you know, it's a bit like when you shoot people um, and if you backlight someone's hair for example you know backlight them and uh if they're blonde um you don't want to overexpose the backlight because their their hair will disappear you know and if you've got a guy with short gray hair and you backlight their head um they'll look bald so but if they've got dark hair you can put a lot more light you know a girl with long black hair you know you can blast more backlight into the back of her hair Mm -hmm. just to bring out those bring out the the that kind of detail so it's right right right. it's it's everything is uh with photography is is bespoke you know (laughs) you can't there's no one rule (laughs) for for everything right 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 hey so let me ask you have you done any training before or do you do any uh i mean in the past have you trained people on how to you know photograph or, or what 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 have you done I have done. I've done some. I've done some um, s- some photography uh, workshops, and um, but that was kind of for people. So I, I for, for for shooting, and I you know used a model um, to shoot uh, to to train people how to shoot people really, and to shoot models because I think some people amateurs I think get get a little bit intimidated by models, and they don't know what to do. Um, I mean, obviously, the good thing about shooting a model is that the model gen- generally knows more than the photographer <laughs> if they're starting out. So the model can help them, you know. And I think, it's, but even so, I think there's a, there's a little bit of um, you know they go, oh, I, they hire a model for the day to shoot, and then they don't know what to do. So it's kind of like telling them how to how to not not just how to shoot a model, but how to behave, how to be, you know they just don't know. And some people grow up with this kind of like slightly archaic way of thinking that, you know, whatever it is that they've got in their heads of models that, um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a way, there's a way to, to get the best out of a model. And it's, uh, and it's to be professional, even though they're not, you know, right. so it, 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 <laughs> there's, there's, a, that's, that's kind of part of the way that you deal with situations like that. And, 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 and all kinds of lighting that, that, um that you can shoot and i and 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 i tend to concentrate a lot on the face you know the face you know obviously you know the eyes the mm-hmm. eyes are, are the the main focus of people pretty much you know mm-hmm. 95 percent of the time 
So um, and the way and the, and every face structure is different. Um, and um, so there's there's just different ways of shooting different kinds of people and and real people you know people who aren't but i say real people that's terrible isn't it? I mean, <laughs> real people like models aren't real you know? right right right, right um, yeah uh, but um but 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 people who aren't models who are not not used to um being photographed is another thing altogether as well mm -hmm. so it's a, it's a it, there's there's techniques but it's not just techniques it's photography techniques it's personality techniques you know it's how to talk to somebody and how to get the best out of somebody and how to how to how they enjoy the they enjoy the, the the experience of being photographed i think is 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 one of the most important aspects of being a photographer right you know you have to be able to relate to all kinds of people across the board and um and that's that's i would say is one of the most important attributes you know if you want to be a if you want to be a people photographer <laughs> and you you and you're painfully shy then you know it may be not be the best thing to do is to be a portrait photographer you yeah, might probably have to <laughs> still life uh, yeah. which is you know that sort of thing i mean i was shy i guess i was a, i was a shy shy kid and um, what photography actually brought out of me my personality so mm -hmm. so realizing what i had to do it made it definitely helped so there's a there's an element of psychology that goes into photography that um that i do understand as well is that when you're photo photographing somebody um how you relate to them um and how what you get back from them is is actually really important i know this is not what the, the this is not oh, really no, it, it's... to do with the still life things that you shoot but it's um it's still you know i it's, for me it's like one of the part of the most interesting parts of photography as well actually oh, that's fantastic hey Stephen, how can uh if somebody wants to reach out to you or just i mean there's obviously your website here uh stephen uh but you're you're probably on uh you're on linkedin for sure i'm uh, on linkedin i'm on I'm on Facebook. I'm terrible at social media. I'm not the best. I'm trying to improve. <laughs> I'm still, <laughs> I'm, I'm still a bit of a traditionalist in that respect. Um, but I'm, you know, and 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 I'm on Instagram, um, and I'm trying to build up a little bit more of my social media. But it's a bit difficult, really, because now, um, one, we're all locked down, and I should be on the social media like a maniac. But I'm renovating a church, so yeah, you're um, photographer turned I'm, construction worker. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm a, yeah, I'm a laborer. A laborer. Um, yeah, my 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 girlfriend's dad is a builder, and I'm working for him. <laughs> yeah, which is a, which is like okay, you, he knows what he's doing. So it's a bit like you know, he's very good at everything, every aspect of building. Um, mm. He's brilliant, and um, it's a bit like me and photography. I've done so many different kinds of photography that um I, I one thing i didn't do which is kind of you know makes it difficult is not specialized specifically in one thing and so i've done all these different things and got challenged myself to photograph all these different aspects food uh still life food i'm I shoot food now which i didn't do before um and uh, which i actually find really interesting i love it um and interiors um a bit of architecture but i enjoy interiors i love i love the whole pr process of shooting a building and for the creative side of interiors and an mm -hmm. architecture i love architecture anyway so um and i love all these things like cars you know beautiful cars I mean, we, how would you not like a fantastic looking car you know and then um from the aesthetics point of view and and um people everybody's every single person is different there's so many different things to photograph i'm thinking i have i can't i can't concentrate on one thing i've just got so many so many things oh i love that i'm going to photograph it oh, i love that you know i love derelict buildings you know and i love old things and um so uh, you know it's it's hard but right you know it, that's uh that's just uh, my my brain you know goes off in different tangents um right which is uh, difficult. Well, look, uh, Stephen, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate uh, the insight. You actually gave me a couple of ideas as you were talking. I'm like, oh, damn, good. I need, to, I need to try this and I need to try that. So that's fantastic. And uh, for those of you watching, uh, stephenperry.com, he's got some really incredible work. Uh, he's a true artist in, in my books. 
And uh, Stephen, hey, what can I say? Thanks again. Uh, best of luck with the renovations and we'll, we'll be in touch for sure. Thank you so much, Eugene. I really appreciate it. It's been a real pleasure, actually, just to see, what, not to see you again as well after all yeah. this time and to meet up and uh, meet up in uh, re in virtual virtual land. Absolutely. So thanks well, for, thanks very much for inviting me. Hang, hang back here. I'm just going to come back after I'm done, and we'll we'll just chit chat uh, the closeout. So just hang back. All right. All right. Thanks again. All right, folks. Well, that does it. Uh, that's uh, some really great information there on on lighting. You know, for for different types of scenarios, some really great insight. Um, thanks. If you're interested, uh, make sure to subscribe there, and uh, you can always catch Click 3D. You'll be another episode coming up really, really soon. Thanks a lot, and have a good day. Bye bye.